When the bones were dated, they were found to be about 100,000 years old. The oldest modern human remains outside Africa. The dates fit well with that greening of the Sahara. So could these people be the pioneers I'm looking for? whose descendants went on to populate the rest of the world. Some of their remains are now kept in the Rockefeller Museum in Jerusalem. This skeleton is incredibly well preserved. And the main reason for that is that the bodies at school weren't just left on the surface of the ground, they were deliberately buried. And not only that, they were buried with objects, with shell beads, and one of them even had a boar's jewel enclosed in its arms. Surely this is further evidence for modern ways of thinking and behaving, for spirituality, and perhaps even a belief in the afterlife. But not everything here is what it seems. These people may well have been the first to leave Africa, but it looks like they can't be our ancestors. Because the trail then dries up. All evidence of modern humans disappears. It looks like these families died out completely. around 90,000 years ago, when the Middle East and Sahara returned to desert, and life here became impossible. For our species, it seems that this was a dead end and it shows just how fragile our existence was and what a massive impact climate change could have on a human population. But it wasn't the end of the human journey. So where was that elusive route out of Africa? The Sahara Desert once again closed the door on any migration north, leaving just one of my four routes out of Africa the Red Sea. If they did try to cross it, the most likely point is at its mouth, the Gate of Grief. Could at least a few families have broken out of Africa here? Below me is the Red Sea. To the west, the small African state of Djibouti. And over to my east, I could just about make out the coast of Yemen or the tip of the Arabian Peninsula. At this point, it is just 30 kilometers between Africa and Arabia. Thirty kilometers of sea is still a big problem if you don't have a seagoing vessel. But from about 90,000 years ago, something interesting began to happen. The very same climate change that had turned the Sahara back to desert had another impact. It made sea levels drop. And at the Gate of Grief, the gap between Africa and Arabia became much smaller. As sea levels fell, the distance across the Red Sea at this point dropped to just 11 kilometers. So perhaps here at last was a chance to risk everything, to cross the gate of grief and take a step into the unknown. A 
and geneticists working for this series have been able to estimate how many people made that leap out of Africa, whichever way they took. They estimate the size of this group that made the crossing from Africa to Arabia was just a few hundred people. And geneticists have now tested the DNA of thousands and thousands of non-Africans. And not one single person has been found who can't trace their ancestry back to this tiny group of wanderers. It may have been just a single tribe. And whatever you look like, if you're not African, you descend from them.